Okay, so okay, we here come to our last section of the day. Uh, so we are have uh, uh, Slenha, uh, who is uh, from uh, Accenture Levinance, and, and he is the cloud integration architect. So I actually meet him um, when I talk to another European banks. So he uh, actually, they have some interesting experience to share as well when preparing the bank APIs. So um, how are you? I'm good. Uh, how are you, Patrick? Yeah, fine. Uh, this is the last section, and uh, thanks for your support. Yeah. Okay, so your slide is good, so I will pass the time to you, and thanks. Okay, thanks, Patrick. Yeah, uh, Thanks, everyone, for joining in for the session, and uh, welcome to the session as well. I'll start with a quick introduction about myself. I'm Snehal Chakraborty, working at Accenture Netherlands as a cloud integration architect. I help customers solve API management problems, and I live in the Netherlands with my family. Um, so I'll start with a bit of a rewind. So how API management has evolved over the years. So if we look uh, 10, 15 years ago, there were no API gateways at all. SOAP APIs were used mostly tightly coupled. Sometimes uh, service registries were used, but, but there, was, there was no proper uh, API catalog. And mostly the systems were, were service bus kind of systems. Then we slowly moved ahead to the common API gateway platform where a big uh, a monolithic installation was done, which acted as the API gateway. Consumers and providers were mostly located on premise. Uh, there was a single developer portal, which acted as a catalog. And this installation also had a really large uh, footprint. Uh, slowly in the past few years, we have seen that uh, uh, multiple vendors have come up with the distributed API way, uh, gateway offering, wherein uh, they offer a management plane uh, to control multiple uh, logical API gateways. So uh, gateways now can be installed at, at different locations uh, based on the, the type of use cases they serve to. And again, uh, one, one plane can be uh, used to control them. And finally, a new trend that uh, we see in, in the past uh, uh, year or so is organizations going for multiple API gateways. So there are several reasons for that. Uh, cloud journey uh, being one of the major factors for, for this. And also there's more demand of autonomy within an organization for, for teams within the organization to be able to choose their own uh, platform. So moving ahead, uh, so if we look at a very high level, so this is a, a very high level picture of how distributed API gateway setup looks like. So there is a common management plane, there's a common developer portal, and there could be separate logical gateways running on premise or on cloud, and then providing APIs to different consumers. And if we look at the new upcoming setup, then they really there are different API gateways with different planes. Uh, there could be different developer portals as well. And now they are serving APIs uh, towards the consumers. So what is the reason for, for going for multiple API gateways? So hybrid, like I said, hybrid setup. So mostly most organizations are doing their cloud journeys now. So there, there is an inclination towards using cloud native gateways. Uh, if one looks at the smart beer state of APIs report of, of last year, uh, AWS and Azure native gateways were the most popular gateways uh, on, on, on that chart. So this, this really shows that as in uh, when the, the organizations are making their cloud journey, the choice for using cloud native gateways is, is increasing. One more reason is that these cloud native gateways come as a pass offering. So it's, it's really easy to spin them up using existing uh, infra as code products like Terraform. And also as and when companies are doing their migration, they, are, they still have workloads running on premise. So they still need an API gateway on premise uh, to, to have APIs exposed from them and also to connect towards their cloud environments. So that, that in a sense uh, means that there will be two or more uh, gateways in an organization when they are doing that, that cloud journey. Again, there are different requirements. So even if uh, organizations are doing their cloud journey, some have uh, uh, regulatory requirements to keep their data localized, to keep it within the on-premise center and the API gateways located near to that. Also based on type of traffic, the there could be uh, a different set of gateways. So a se se separate API gateway for open APIs, a separate API gateway for the, the internal enterprise APIs. There could be a separate API gateway for uh, partner APIs. 
Also, there's a debate on, on shared versus dedicated gateways. So within an organization, there could be shared gateway used by uh, multiple domains or grid within the organizations, but, but some grids based on their own uh, security requirements, performance requirements could, could uh, ask for their own dedicated instances as well. Autonomy is also a major factor. Like, like I mentioned, uh, teams within an organization, uh, within subsidiaries of an organization, they want to make the choice of their own platforms. Uh, there could be budget requirements as well. So customer optimization uh, issues. And finally, there is a comfort factor as well. So as teams work in a separate, uh, in a, a specific ecosystem, for example, Azure or AWS, they get more comfortable with the ecosystem. So they tend to have an inclination of, of using the native gateways. Could, could be any, any hyperscaler platform. Uh, so what are the challenges uh, posed by multiple API gateways? So if you look, implementing security in a uniform manner, that, that is a big challenge. How, how the, the consumer will be authenticated, authorized, what kind of subscription management will be used. So that, again, is a big challenge. Governance is a big challenge. How, what kind of uh, do's and don'ts are there on the platforms? How will they be enforced across the various platforms? Observability, uh, again, monitoring, logging. Uh, how will that be done and how how will that help in in troubleshooting if there are any issues and finally discovery so how will the consumers uh, come on board discover the right apis and, and then start using them so let's do a bit of deep dive now so by headless over here i've been really moving away from uh, a constant uh, management plane and start using the management apis of the separate api gateways uh, to provide the same functionality and then anything can be hooked in or plugged into those uh, management apis so this is kind of a sample uh, diagram that i have drawn over here so if we look we have separate uh, api gateways with their own planes uh, uh, below and then they interact with the above um, management plane using management apis so there could be separate components within the plane there could be an api marketplace uh, which which serves as the catalog and the onboarding platform uh, there could be a lifecycle management component to really manage the API proxies on, on these platforms. Uh, that there is security and governance, which is a cross-cutting concern across uh, all these layers. Now, doing a deep dive into individual components. So if we look at API marketplace as the first component, so this is really the, the central catalog where, where consumers will find the APIs, uh, get onboarded and start use them. Uh, it could also serve as the place for publishing uh, standard and guidelines, or different business use cases, or, or uh, uh, at the end also build a community uh, for for developers. Some features of the platform uh, of this marketplace could be uh, yeah, uh, discovery, so really how the uh, APIs are discovered and found. Documentation again, documentation is a key aspect for an API, API ecosystem uh, to be successful. So yeah, good documentation makes life easy for both the consumers and the providers in the long term. Uh, easy, easy onboarding, uh, fast uh, time to market, and and also less support questions in the long run. And finally, subscriptions. This is uh, probably the most important feature. So uh, this allows consumer to to get onboarded and start using the APIs. Again, this could have multiple parts to it, uh, since uh, sub there is one level of subscription on the API gateway where uh, and a consumer gets an API key, which is really internal to the platform. And then uh, uh, one would want to have uh, a, an extra security layer of, for example, OAuth. So there could be an, a client onboarding on an uh, identity provider as well. Um, so if we look at the setup, how it will look like. So uh, the discovery and the, and the documentation can be fetched from a document repository. Uh, so again, document repository ex exposing its APIs to, to fetch, to allow the marketplace to fetch the content. The document repository can be GitHub. So then it allows uh, Git flows to be used to build uh, workflows, uh, to do linting and also follow the docs as code approach. Uh, for subscription management, uh, again, management APIs will have to be used from, from the individual gateways uh, to allow onboarding and, and generation of API keys. And also for onboarding on the IDP, IDP uh, APIs have to be used for the client uh, application onboarding and assignment of the right scopes. 
and the API marketplace can also be uh, federated with an identity provider uh, to do the user management uh, and implement possibly implement RBAC. So this could be really useful if if the the marketplace needs to be open for let's say for partners as well. So then uh, the providers can really control who they want the, their APIs to be visible to. Uh, if I look at lifecycle management, so this is really controlling how API proxies are, are deployed and, and maintained on the API gateway. So really the, the CRUD operations, the create, delete, update um, uh, operations around the API proxies on the platform. Uh, so they, they can be, uh, this lifecycle management can be offered in, in multiple flavors. Uh, so there can be REST APIs. So really uh, uh, building REST, REST APIs and providing them to the providers. Uh, so that they can hook the, those APIs into their own, let's say, CI CD pipelines to deploy the API proxies or to modify, delete, update the API proxies. And there could also be uh, pipeline templates. Uh, so let's say if if uh, there are dedicated gateways, they then just give the pipeline templates with, with the right uh, tasks in them uh, for them to use. Or for shared gateways, there could be central pipelines uh, as well with the same tasks. So what what uh, benefit does that uh, does this give is that you can really control and uh, uh, on what kind of policies are are applied on the API proxies. So really do proper governance, uh, proper naming conventions on on how the proxies are created on the platform. Uh, do proper linting. So all these things can can be really controlled using these uh, these APIs and pipelines and also in an automated manner. So now. Uh, uh, providers can easily uh, deploy and, and manage their proxies as a part of their own APIs uh, that they manage uh, in their own ecosystem. Uh, if we look at security, uh, security, one of the main pillars of, of an API ecosystem. So uh, security then, it, it again comes in multiple flavors. Uh, yeah, there has to be a role-based access control. So. Any, any API gateway that we set up needs to have role-based access control, especially the shared ones, so that uh, yeah, teams do not uh, overwrite each other's APIs. They, are, they work in, in, within their own uh, uh, workspace, uh, uh, logical workspace, and, and work with only, only their own artifacts. Uh, most platforms come, come with an RBAC out of the box, but again, uh, in order to uh, really realize that RBAC, an automated onboarding process has to be created. Again, each platform come with their own uh, API management, uh, 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 these RBAC management APIs. So use that and then create an automated onboarding flow, like I mentioned over here. Uh, yeah, it's, For example, this could quickly be done using Office 365 tools like Power App and Power Automate, so really create a front end uh, and a back end using uh, the management APIs uh, allow the users to get onboarded uh, on the API gateways themselves. So these users are the providers. So they could uh, really add uh, uh, themselves and their team members to a group, assign roles, and then, then uh, manage those groups as well. So again, an automated uh, way is, is the way to go for, for doing uh, setting, setting up our back as well. For authentication and authorization, there are uh, yeah, again different steps. Authentication is, is really uh, knowing who the consumer is on the gateway. So for this, uh, most platforms do this, uh, manage this internally where they allow consumers to create their own application and get API keys and, and then subscribe to APIs. So uh, again, this needs to be hooked into the API marketplace. So the marketplace needs to be able to allow consumers uh, to subscribe uh, uh, to different APIs. Uh, the API gateway provides, uh, again, a management set of APIs uh, to do this stuff. For authorization, the, the consumer needs to be onboarded uh, on the identity provider. Uh, the, the client onboarding is required and then the right scope should also be assigned uh, to the provider so that uh, once they do an action or, or call an API uh, resource and verb, they are found to be allowed to do so. Uh, moving ahead, uh, looking into really governance. So governance is again a key factor in, in uh, ensuring a successful uh, API ecosystem. 
so really defining certain and guidelines around specification uh, de- uh creating linting capabilities around around specifications to to enforce those standard and guidelines uh define the do's and don'ts uh, on the the platform level so really on the api gateway level it has to be crystal clear what what is allowed and what is not allowed uh for example uh, uh an example over here is let's say uh, verb based uh, routing is allowed but transformation of payload is not allowed so this is an example so so all these uh, uh, rules have to be clearly defined and then again these uh, rules can be incorporated in the the assets that are created around life cycle management so the the, the rest apis or the pipeline uh, templates that are created uh, for life cycle management also security guidelines uh, need to be very clear so so which layer does the, the coarse grain security which layer does the fine grain security so all that has to be very clear and and has to be defined uh, under the governance rules so this is kind of a sample uh, uh, structure a uh, governance structure where there is an, a coe team which could have architects so that team really defines the the, the, the rules and then manages the set of rules then there is a, a core platform team uh, which which manages the shared platforms or the shared assets and then there are devops teams which which make use of these platforms so then these uh, the coe teams and and uh, uh, the platform team really educate the devops team they communicate with them and also they support the, these devops teams to to be able to publish their apis on on the gateways and and uh, uh, further uh from an observability uh, perspective uh, again this is also a key factor where monitoring and analytics and logging uh, are, are the key aspects in it so proactive monitoring of the gateway uh, using uh, different products so depending on where the gateway is running if it's running on cloud then then there are cloud native uh, uh, resources available for example if it's running in aws one could use cloudwatch for for resource alerting and monitoring uh if it's running on premise then, then there are other products available proactive monitoring on of apis uh, using a health check endpoint so that is also uh a uh, an a way to uh, to really check if apis are up and available but then again one has to be really careful over here uh, yeah this could generate some additional traffic load so really one has to be really uh, prudent in 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 doing this uh, so when when they want to uh, set up a separate health check endpoint uh logging events in in a central uh, logging platform so this is also one one key aspect which which allows troubleshooting in a diy manner so for example logging in splunk and then opening up uh, the index for 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 providers and com- uh, consumers uh, and also uh, possibly use uh, some kind of correlation ids and then log it in each layer to to stitch, stitch the logs together in case of uh, troubleshooting and finally analytics so uh, each each uh, gateway generates analytics around uh, usage, usage of apis so how the apis are being used which is the most popular one yeah. uh, which consumer is using what apis so all all these uh, statistics are, are are locked and there are a- management apis available to fetch these statistics uh, out of the management layer uh, so opening up these apis towards providers could could really help them for example in case of open apis uh, this could allow providers to to set up monetization strategies so really gain insights into how their apis are being used and set up monetization strategies around that if they are already monetizing their apis it could help them uh, do reconciliation and generate bills for their customers so again uh, opening up these analytics apis has uh, uh, quite a few benefits uh finally in the end uh, some things to remember uh, before uh, moving uh, uh, towards this direction so really if if we are going for multiple vendors then then limit the choice on the number of vendors uh yeah more vendors bring more complexity choose a vendor uh, api platform vendor only when you have your requirements uh, ready so really concrete uh, requirements uh governance is is really key there shouldn't be any compromise on on api or platform governance it it has to be really aligned with 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 uh, business as well so again it it shouldn't be only an it initiative it should be a government should be a business initiative as well otherwise yeah it's hard to enforce and it won't fly uh, make uh, adherence to governance the, the path of least resistance so so really uh, 
change the mindset and 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 uh, educate teams to to start uh, using the rules properly and and uh, adhere to them and really educate uh, uh, teams within the organization that that this is really beneficial in the long term for their apis which they manage as products and, and not really a bottleneck uh, from a security perspective follow a zero trust model so each each layer is responsible for their own security uh, make responsibilities around security very clear so yeah each 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 layer should know what they are responsible for doing and they, there shouldn't be any ambiguities around that and and finally any new feature that you are developing uh, around the api management or the api gateways think of it as as api first uh, approach and and offer it as a, as an api uh, offering uh, towards your users of the platform and yeah this uh, brings me to the end of the uh, presentation Okay, so uh, thanks for the sharing, and then uh, like, uh, it's good to hear about Accenture's uh, perspective on their headness uh, API management. So uh, maybe I would like to ask more, maybe on their contextual mm -hmm. perspective. So I uh, I actually know that uh, you are based in uh, Lebanon, and then you you are also working with a bank there. So how exactly um, this um, model or, or headless API management to help the banks uh, solving their maybe open uh, banking API problem, etc. How 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 is the benefit compared so with the other? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, so as as we see that that more and more organizations are moving towards uh, multiple API gateways, so it is really becoming difficult to manage the gateways. Uh, yeah, up and uh, we we haven't seen any product available which which mm. could manage these these uh, all these gateways together. So, really, the the uh, one approach could be to start using really using the APIs from these gateways available. So, really use APIs to manage the gateway so uh, become headless so use the apis uh, one could build their own uh, ui on top of that or could could plug into different uh, other systems depending on what what the use case is but really becoming uh, moving away from from ui based management to more api based management so that's why the the, the term uh, headless mm, okay so so you, uh, what you mean is that uh, because the the bank is very API, the amount or the kind is actually having more and more. Yeah. So, so that's why they, they, yeah, they need to introduce so, different kind yeah, of products. Yeah. So, so mostly most global organizations, so they have uh, different subsidiaries around the world. So they, they want to choose their own own vendors, but then you still still need some kind of governance to, to, mm. to ensure that uh, the right things are followed. So you still need that, that overview or that insight uh, on, on what, each each uh, subsidiary or each grid with a different platform is doing. Uh, also, mm -hmm. like I mentioned, since uh, organizations are doing their cloud journey, uh, the inclination to use the native gateways is very high. So then mm -hmm. that that more or less uh, uh, ends up with with an organization having multiple gateways uh, anyway. So, mm -hmm. so okay, have, okay, and then they have multiple uh, uh, clouds as well. So if they have uh, Google Cloud, they use the Google Cloud native API gateway on AWS or on Azure. Mm. So they always end up using uh, different API gateways, but then there has to be a way, uh, a central way to really manage and, and uh, govern them so that things are done the, the, in the right manner. Oh, okay. So I think the, the situation is quite interesting here. So maybe the banks actually their progress is much um, much at once. So they have a lot yeah. of API, and yeah. then maybe they have uh, having different team and department. They have uh, they have actually deploy different kind of API solutions. Yeah. So yeah. Um, they have different UI. So what you say yeah. is that uh, the headless API management is so, to uh, do an so orchestration. Really, yeah, the orchestrations really move away from the UI and start using the APIs available from those gateways to to do the same management that you do via UI, but rather start looking at APIs to, to really automate uh, the management lifecycle or other activities that you are doing and really start moving away from that UI as much as possible. Okay, got that. So I think this may this may be the the, the challenge of some of the, yeah. the user here in in next or two years once the the API economy is getting more mature. Yeah. Okay, so I think I got your points and then th really thanks for sharing from from the Euro European angle. So yeah. uh, really uh, thanks again for your support. So yeah. I think this session is uh, almost almost time. So uh, thanks for uh, thanks again. Okay, yeah. so see you soon. Yeah, welcome and thank thanks for uh, allowing me to participate. Yeah, welcome. Okay, bye -bye. thank you. Bye.